My name's Madeline, I'm 19. I'm from Pittsburgh. I started violin when I was six, so I've been playing for 14 years now. And I started because my mom wanted me to start music lessons, so we went to a music school that she knew of, and they had a day where you could test out different instruments to decide which ones you wanted to play. So I tried flute, piano, and violin, and then I decided I wanted to play violin. So then I started going to private lessons, and I went to private lessons every week up until college. And I was in a bunch of different orchestras and like music camps and summer institutes and different kinds of classes like that throughout the years. So it's definitely different playing violin as an adult, not in a professional situation because it's just something like in the back of my head where I can go to use my skills in like a private way where no one has to like calculate a grade or like judge me if the only person listening is me. I've been playing violin longer than I've been doing anything. like almost my entire life. It's probably something that I think about every day, but not in like a very intense way. It's just something in the back of my head and a way for me to understand another culture because I'm able to understand the beats and like why certain rhythms are become popular, why people are drawn to certain notes or certain melodies. They all are connected even though they may sound so different. It's just a common way for everyone to understand every kind of music. I don't regret anything from when I played violin when I was younger. Literally blood, sweat, and tears went into that. I've cried over so many lessons. I guess one bad thing was I felt like, because I was bad at practicing, so every week when I would go see my teacher, I had such personal relationships with them. I would feel so guilty because I thought I could be better than what I actually was. It's so weird to see it from a teacher's perspective now, like everything's flipped upside down. So when I'm teaching my student and if they can't get something, 98% of the time it's just because the way I'm teaching it isn't working. It's not because they're doing something wrong. I never even thought of that as a kid. I always think like, oh, I should be doing something better. I should be working harder, which of course I could have been. But if it's a good teacher, they're never disappointed in you. I'll, like I only want my students to sound good. I am never like sad or annoyed or mad when they can't do something. I'm just like, okay, we'll do it next week. Like it's not that big of a deal. It's so nice to have something where like, I'm automatically proud of all the work I've done. So I remember being like seven years old and like I knew two songs on violin, like I didn't know a lot, but I was like, I was still proud of where I was and every year, no matter which song I'm playing or where I'm at, there's always something that I can find that I'm proud of. Even if I haven't worked like hours on it, it's just something in the back of my head where I'm like, okay, like I'm decent at playing violin, that's something that I can do well.